Hi, I'm Semin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Correction of Thermistor Temperature Sensor Response Time, and this is a passive analog solution. This is a joint work with Evgeny Smidochki. Please see the preceding video, which has the development of the thermistor model that I'm going to use in this presentation. I'm not going to repeat the details of the model just to use it. And here's the link to the video, and I'm going to print this link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. So let me say a few words about the objective of this presentation. Now most sensors have a lag response, and this is true for a thermistor when it is used as a temperature sensor. Now in this presentation, I'm going to explain how this lag can be compensated, at least partially, by a passive analog circuit with a derivative response. Now, I'm showing here a thermistor. This is a thermistor in a resistor as a divider, very typical of temperature sensing. This is a voltage. Here we have just a buffer amplifier. And if we have a temperature step here, then this thermistor is getting hot and the resistance going down and then the output of course will go up and here is the delay we are talking about and this is something that we would like to correct or compensate. So let me first of all show a simulation of the model of the thermistor itself and here we have the temperature represented by a voltage source and, and here I am assuming a step between 0 and 100 centigrade. This is the thermal part this is the thermal resistance and this is the thermal capacitance of the thermistor itself. So this is the outside temperature and this is supposedly the temperature within the thermistor itself. Now this model is very simple, it's a single unit, it's a lumped type of a model, although the correct model should have been like a ladder, a cover with many stages in it. This is just for simplification. And this is the time constant of this uh, thermistor. It's like 15 because three times five is the time constant. Part of it comes from the thermal resistance and part of it from the thermal capacitance. And then we have a model of the thermistor. This is the model. It is a resistor which is defined by this equation. And in this equation, the temperature comes in as part of the parameters here. This is the temperature within the thermistor coming here. Again, this is explained in the first video. And I'm feeding it with 1 amp. This is just for simulation. You don't want to feed 1 amp into a thermistor because it'll get hot. This is just to get a voltage here which represent the resistance of the thermistor. Okay, this is just for simulation. And now I'm also showing here like a circuit for actually measuring temperature. This is a constant voltage. This is a ter the thermistor again. I'm using the same thermistor. Here is the equation. Here is the divider and here is the output. So if we have a step here this is what we are going here at the output of this model, representing the real thermistor, including both the electrical and the thermal delay by this RC network, which is like an emulation of the thermal effect. And here is the typical result of this uh, circuit, of this uh, simulation circuit. We see here a profile of temperature. This is the profile, the input temperature. We see here how the resistance drops of the thermistor, of this particular thermistor. Actually, it starts like 30K and then it drops down as the temperature goes up. And here's the output. And this is the delay we are talking about. And here, of course, it's going slow because uh, we have a long fall time here. And here is a zoom view of the same thing. We see the step in the temperature. We see the resistance going down. And here is the delay we are talking about. It's very important to realize that this is not like a simple RC exponential equation or response. It is modified by the fact that the resistance of the thermistor is nonlinear, 
and during this time the resistance is also changing okay i'm going to show this a little bit later on this is also discussed in the previous video so here is the idea we have a leg this is the first approximation as i've said the leg is not exactly like this but this is just a starting point so i'm assuming it is like an rc circuit and i'm going to compensate it by actually multiplying the output by a derivative okay now i'm using here a capacitor and a resistor it's a classical derivative but i do have to have a resistor because i have to maintain the dc component without the resistor i'm losing the dc component so therefore we have this circuit here which has a component of a derivative uh, but as we will see it has also a pole i'll discuss it in the next slide so here it is this is the transfer function of this network here we I've sort of translated it into something which is more comprehensible. We have a gain here, or a attenuation you might say, and this is this of course uh, resistive network which is attenuating the signal. And then we have a zero and we have a pole. Now the pole is a function of the two resistors, while the zero is a function of this resistor and this capacitor. Okay. So at low frequency, very low frequency, this is just a divider. So that is what we have here. But at high frequency, uh, the capacitor is like a short, and then we have a transfer function of one. And here in the description, we have here a one at high frequency because of this capacitor being of a low impedance. And at low frequency, we have a voltage divider, and this is the voltage divider. Now the zero here is here, the pole is here, and this is the range that we have the derivative. Now, you can extend this range by making this resistor smaller. Now, you cannot change this boundary here, this is one, but you can change this one. But then the signal that you'll get at DC or at low frequency will be very low so this may not be convenient so there is a compromise here i'm not going into this detail i primarily be talking about choosing this uh, capacitor so here is an lt spy simulation schematics to examine this compensation idea we have here the temperature this is the thermal delay the temperature coming out of the RC circuit which represent the temperature within the sensor is put into the thermistor here we have the divider the voltage here now goes into this source this will be like an amplifier which is feeding this derivative circuit here is the resistor uh, two resistors one to three in this case and the capacitor is chosen such as the zero which is the product of these two will be like here so this is 15 and here it's also 15. i'm choosing larger uh, resistors because uh putting it three ohm is not practical okay doesn't matter what you have to worry about is of course the time constant so it represents this circuit but again due to uh, the fact that uh, we have this resistor it's going to have also a pole so here it is and this is for a step of 0 to 25 degrees centigrade here is this step here this is the temperature step this is the temperature within the thermistor itself okay because of the delay the thermal delay here it is and as you can see the output is a bit faster it is faster because of the non-linearity of the thermistor and this one now this correction voltage here is after correction with the derivative well it's not perfect as you can see but it's pretty good this is for the ideal case or the theoretical case assuming that the delay is by this time constant of 15 now if i'll increase a little bit the capacitor to 55 microfarad you see that i'm improving the response 
it's a little bit, there is a little bit overshoot, which is okay. I don't think that overshoot, uh, small overshoot makes a big difference here, but it is improving it a little bit. And again, you see that this is the red one here is what you'd get without the co compensation. And here is what you get with compensation. It's very significant. Now, with the same capacitor, I'm exposing the system to a zero to 100 degree centigrade temperature step. And here, all of a sudden, we see here an overshoot, which is quite a bit. In some cases, there is no problem in that, but in some cases, it might not be desirable. So, you see that due to the nonlinearity, as you go to an other ranges, the compensation you, we did on one range is not exactly the one that you need on the other range. So, if I now change the capacitor to 30 microfarad, this goes back to a lower capacitance, then I'm improving it very much. Of obviously, this will cause a delay in the case of the smaller temperature step as we had it before. Now, with the same 30 microfarad, I'm exposing the system to 50 to 70 degree. Okay, again, it's not very good. And to correct it, I have to put a 45 microfarad capacitor, which brings it to a very nice response. So the point is that this is not a simple RC response, like first order but it is a non-linear response and therefore there is no one passive circuit that you can use to compensate it completely over all the ranges. So what is the conclusion here? I think I've shown that a simple derivative network can indeed improve the response of a thermistor temperature sensor. The compensation is not perfect but can be adjusted for good response by tuning to the expected operating range. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.